Hello chaps, Paul Curran here. I hope you and all the listeners are well. The highlight of the last week for me was attending an evening at the Stratford Arts House, formerly the Stratford Civic Hall, where I heard Robert Plant with his cooperative uh, group of musicians known as Saving Grace uh, give a, a truly sensational performance. Um, this borrowed from a report in the local paper. Last Thursday, a packed Stratford Playhouse witnessed a very special performance. Legendary rock god Robert Plant, he who led Zeppelin, of course, introducing his new outfit, Saving Grace. In the audience were such luminaries as musician Steve Winwood and broadcaster Whispering Bob Harris. It continues... This set mostly comprises their interpretations of the songs of others, but this is no covers band routine. Rather, the approach and delivery suggest a performance of wholly original songs, such as the attention to detail and care in which they are played. Some of these are unfamiliar tunes from the history of music, dug from America's rich folk and blues traditions, rubbing shoulders with some eclectic cuts from the likes of Lowe, Donovan, Patty Griffin and the Everly Brothers but all given a signature identity from this multi-talented band. Appalachian bluegrass style features prominently with Whirly's lightning strike banjo picking, a real driving force behind the likes of Satan, Your Kingdom Must Come Down, Cindy, I'll Marry You Someday, and Your Long Journey, while he shows he can hold his own in the singing stakes by taking the lead on Soul of a Man. Meanwhile, Kelsey provides mightily impressive guitar work on Nat King Cole's Nature Boy. That was a particular highlight. Um, but it was a tremendous evening, and Robert Plant comes across as a very uh, um, generous performer and um, as a, a, a modest chap too. I was there with a group of friends, and the first poem this week I'd like to dedicate to one of them, Ollie White, as he uh, continues to work on his house. Uh, Ollie is a an accomplished portrait painter um, and I found this for him. Unfortunately I can't see who it's written by so it'll have to remain as anonymous internet contributor um, and it touches on Leonard Cohen um, because there are no poems on radio head to hand. Oh, with the mention of Leonard Cohen I should say that after the last Poetry Corner broadcast um, one regular Oxfordshire listener um, got in touch and she advised me to turn it in a bit as she was, quote, very busy trying to stop the country being taken over by the fascists. Well, uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to apologise to anyone else who was similarly affected. This is called Looks of Disdain. On a cold, wet Tuesday in December, relieved to be stood in the warmth of the queue in the co-op, counting up my coppers and listening to Buckley's cover of Cohen's Hallelujah from the cashier's cackling radio. I raised my arms and sang along at the top of my lungs, punching the air with every syllable. This week, three sonnets. The first is simply titled Poem, and it is by the present Poet Laureate, Simon Armitage. I found this in a collection put together by Don Patterson, himself a, an award-winning sonnet writer, and um, he suggests that this poem might be um, a manifesto by Simon Armitage, because it typically uh, offers an appraisal of, of someone without uh, reverting to caricature um, to arrive at, uh, allow the, the listener to arrive at um, his or her conclusion. Um, Armitage, of course, born in 1963 and the current Poet Laureate. This is Poem. And if it snowed and snow covered the drive, he took a spade and tossed it to one side and always took his daughter up at night and slippered her the one time that she lied. 
And every week, week he tipped up half his wage, and what he didn't spend each week he saved, and praised his wife for every meal she made, and once, for laughing, punched her in the face. And for his mum, he hired a private nurse, and every Sunday taxied her to church, and he blubbed when she went from bad to worse, and twice he lifted ten quid from her purse. Here's how they rated him when they look back. Sometimes he did this. Sometimes he did that. Also grateful to Don Patterson for pointing out that that sonnet, that English sonnet, is unusual because all the rhymes are assonantal. That is to say that they rhyme on the vowels rather than on the consonants. Now, Jason... Strugnell is the fictitious bad poet created uh, by Wendy Cope. I think she refers to him as the Bard of Tulse Hill. Wendy Cope was born in 1945 and this sonnet is simply from Strugnell's sonnets. Not only marble but the plastic toys from cornflake packets will outlive this rhyme. I can't immortalise you, love. Our joys will lie unnoticed in the vault of time. When Mrs Thatcher has been cast in bronze and her administration is a page in some O-level textbook, when the dons have analysed the story of our age, when travel firms sell tours of outer space and aeroplanes take off without a sound, and Tulse Hill has become a trendy place, and Upper Norwoods on the underground, your beauty and my name will be forgotten. My love is true, but all my verse is rotten. And finally, this sonnet is by Albert Hecht, who lived from, uh, he's an American, he was born on the 16th of January 1923, and he lived until the 20th of October 2004. He won the Pulitzer Prize in 1968, the Pulitzer Prize for Poetry, and the Robert Frost Prize in 2000. I beg your pardon, Anthony Hecht. Anthony Hecht, you probably noticed me um, hesitate. But it's, it's Anthony Hecht. And this is called Naming the Animals. Having commanded Adam to bestow names upon all the creatures, God withdrew to Empyrean palaces of blue, that warm and windless morning long ago, and seemed to take no notice of the vexed look on the young man's face as he took thought of all the miracles the Lord had wrought, now to be labelled, dubbed, eclept, indexed. Before an addled mind and puddled brow, the feathered nation and the finny prey passed by. There went biped and quadruped, Adam looked forth with bottomless dismay into the tragic eyes of his first cow and shyly ventured, Thou shalt be called Fred. <laughs>